Recall petitions against Democrats surge across the nation. In this video, we're going to take a tour of the mass uprising against authoritarian and far-left Democrats. How upwards of three dozen mayors and governors are currently targets of recall efforts, and how in many respects the backlash against the far-left is just beginning. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone, patriots all across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. I'm getting ready, as you can see, for the debate tonight. If this is your first time here at this channel, and you're looking for some daily encouragement and optimism, as well as analysis to help you make sense of these crazy times, you have found your oasis in this channel. We post two videos a day, analyze the current events, analyze some super awesome conservative trends so we can all live in the present in a lot of even better things to come. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. It'd be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel where each and every day we together celebrate, yes, the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. And speaking of a new conservative age, if you are looking for an encouraging and hopeful alternative, all the fake news is being spewed out there on a daily basis from the leftist likes of CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times, you're going to find no better antidote than what's in the pages of my book, the return of Christendom. Now, don't take my word, my unbiased word for it, right? Read through the reviews on Amazon, over 150 of them, and you'll see how this book cuts through all the cynicism and despair that we so often feel living in this crazy globalist world. And page after page, I give you all the data and statistics and indicators that show nothing less than a new conservative Christian majority emerging throughout the United States and Europe. And it's already transforming the world map into a more nationalist, populist, and traditionalist world. And if you click on that link below right now, today, we are offering this book for a limited time at a 50% discount. That's right, half off. So don't wait. It's a limited time offer. Click on that link and get your book at a super discount today and arm yourself with the information you need to crush fake news once and for all. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. We got nothing short of a massive surge of recall petitions against Democrat politicians going on quite literally everywhere. Efforts to remove virtue signaling Democrat governors and mayors are popping up all across the country. Now, the latest effort involves getting rid of Wisconsin's feckless leftist governor, Tony Evers. As of now, over a quarter of a million signatures have been collected to hold a special recall election to get rid of this guy. Now, if you're not familiar, Evers is the governor who poured oil on the fires of the Kenosha riots, which were, of course, sparked by the shooting of Jacob Blake, who we now know was indeed resisting arrest. Blake has a history of assaulting police officers and resisting arrest, and he's definitely a bad dude. But that means nothing when urban populations have been for decades saturated with the frenzy-whipping propaganda of cultural Marxism, which tells them that their underprivileged conditions in life are purposeful, that they're actually purposefully oppressed and suppressed by a domineering white supremacist and racist system. And that's precisely how this feckless leftist governor of Wisconsin responded when he blamed the supposed racism of law enforcement for the shootings after he admitted that he actually had no idea of what happened. But again, who cares when your mind has been infested with cultural Marxism? So here's Evers' official statement regarding the shooting before he even knew of the full details of what happened. Quote, Tonight, Jacob Blake was shot in the back multiple times in broad daylight in Kenosha, Wisconsin. While we do not have all the details yet, what we know for certain is that he is not the first black man or person to have been shot or injured or mercilessly killed at the hands of individuals in law enforcement in our state and in our country. Can you believe that? He's not the first black man to be mercilessly killed at the hands of law enforcement. This is a freaking governor, gang. All right. We stand with all those who have and continue to demand justice, equity, and accountability for black lives in our country. Lives like those of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Tony Robinson, Dontre Hamilton, and Ernest Lacey, and Civil Smith. And we stand against excessive use of force and immediate escalation when engaging with black Wisconsinites. I have said all along that although we must offer our empathy, equally important is our action. In the coming days, we will demand just that of elected officials in our state who have failed to recognize the racism in our state and our country. 
for far too long, blah, blah, blah. So saith the governor of Wisconsin. So as it turns out, Wisconsinites don't really see it that way, and over a quarter of a million of them have signed a petition to get rid of this cultural Marxist ideologue disguised as a public servant. So the Democrat governor in Wisconsin is facing a major recall challenge, but he is hardly alone. It's widely recognized that dozens of leftist governors and mayors are facing similar recall efforts. In Seattle, home of the failed Marxist experiment, which of course is a redundant phrase, Marxism by definition is a failure, but Seattle of course was home to the Chaz Autonomous Zone, the racially segregated communist utopia where three people were shot and killed under the leadership of a residential warlord. A King County court judge has cleared the way for a petition to go forward in an effort to recall the disaster of a mayor, Jenny Durkin. Now, again, if you don't know, just literally a few months ago, Jenny Durkin was the darling of the future of progressivism. She was one of the up-and-coming white bourgeois liberal progressives that was considered, you know, the future, one of the future leaders of the Democratic Party. She's now politically dead, and she died as a result of the catastrophe in Seattle, constituted not only by the race riots, but also by the utterly insane and, frankly, I believe, impeachable dereliction of her law enforcement responsibilities in allowing the CHAZ, or the CHOP, autonomous zone to be set up on public and private property unimpeded for several weeks, resulting in the death of a number of people. And so it's no surprise that we're seeing a recall effort, which is dubbed Fire the Mayor by organ uh, organizers. Now, according to the recall, simply put, and I quote, Mayor Durkin's complete negligence in protecting the rights and safety of the people of Seattle has made a clear case that she is no longer fit to govern. Now, keep in mind, this is primarily a leftist effort to oust the mayor. They're particularly outraged over the mayor's use of tear gas to disperse the rioters and the protesters over the summer. And this is why I think she's so freaked out over this, right? She's actually been asking the King County judge to reconsider her ruling to allow a recall petition to proceed against her. And she's coming out and saying, look, I mean, come on, give me a break. I didn't, I didn't make the decision to use tear gas. The, po the police chief did it. Not me. I'd never do that. Which again is so bizarre because she just, she continues to abdicate her law enforcement responsibilities, not to mention throwing cops under the bus. But nevertheless, in a motion that was filed uh, just a few weeks back, Mayor Durkin argued that it's not her job to dictate Seattle police policies, so she's trying to weasel her way out of this. Uh, it is not working. The writing is on the wall here as this petition goes forward. Uh, she may very uh, certainly be impeached and go down in history as one of the most disgraced mayors of our lifetime. And it's not just Durkin. We have another far leftist in Seattle getting potentially recalled as well. But first, as you can see by what I'm wearing here, we've got some awesome new merch available at super discounts. I got my Sleepy Joe t-shirt on here, and there's lots more where that came from. We've got a bunch of fun shirts and coffee mugs celebrating Trump and mocking Biden, all available at our merch site that you can go, that you're actually going to love. And all you got to do is click on that link below in the pinned comment section and use the code TURLY20 to get 20% off. But this is a limited time offer, so do not wait. Click on that link below and get your own awesome new Trump and Biden t-shirts and merch today. All right, so let's go back to Seattle. Residents there have had it with this left-wing lunatic city council member named Kashama Sawant. Residents in the Capitol Hill District organized a grassroots coalition to try to oust this radical leftist legislature who residents believe has completely lost touch with her district, not to mention reality. She's a rabid proponent of defunding the police. So that's what's going on in Seattle. Let's go on over to Michigan, right, where there have been a number of recall efforts aimed at the insane governor, Gretchen Whitmer. A recall petition was formally submitted to Michigan's Board of State canvassers at the beginning of June. And while the petition was eventually rejected by the board, claiming that it lacked clarity and factual basis, frankly, whatever that means, another group called Restore Freedom has formed a recall petition in the hopes of ousting their ultra-left authoritarian governor, who at one time, you know, was considered a possible running mate for Joe Biden, but 
Alas, <laughs> she turned out to be the wrong color. In the meantime, the Board of State Canvassers has indeed approved a petition to strip Whitmer of her special emergency powers, which allows her to take actions without the legislature's approval during declared emergencies. And of course, Whitmer is flipping out over all of this. And again, because, you know, she's become such an icon of the tyrannical left, she's using the occasion to do what politicians do best to raise money to fill her political coffers. So we got recall efforts for Seattle's ultra-left mayor, Michigan's Goonie governor, Wisconsin. The Democrat governor of Louisiana is also another target. For some reason, conservative Louisianans thought it would be a good idea to put a leftist liberal in charge of their state. Uh, obviously, they're having buyer's remorse, and we're going to say, we told you so. The Democrat governor of Nevada is actually the target of four recall petitions. By the way, that pales in comparison to Michigan's Gretchen Whitmer. She's the subject of 20 recall petitions. But the Democrat governor of Nevada is also being targeted as we speak, and as, of course, uh, California's Governor Gavin Newsom. Right, there have thus far been three recall efforts at ousting Newsom. Two have been rejected, but the third seems to be gathering actually some serious steam. It's pretty interesting. There are currently over 70 community Facebook groups advocating the recall petition, and they have for some time. They uh, Their deadline isn't until November, uh, just a few, oh, about four or five weeks from now. And it's all over how he handled the COVID virus and the tyrannical measures he put into place and the house arrests for over three months in California and the like. So petition signing events are being held all across California in an effort to oust the governor. And finally, in Boise, Idaho, efforts are underway to kick out the Democrat mayor, Lauren McLean, and a Boise City Council member, Lisa Sanchez. The petition accuses McLean of lying to the public, campaigning as a moderate, but then governing as an ultra-liberal leftist, told you so as particularly evident in her draconian measures during the COVID lockdown, as well as her disparagement against police and law enforcement after the race riots broke out. It was the same with Sanchez, who used cultural Marxist racist rhetoric to disparage law enforcement. Idaho, obviously, is a very, very conservative uh, uh, state. It's entirely red, for the exception of Boise and Moscow up north, where the University of Idaho is. And so it's no wonder that voters are rising up against these ultra left wing activists disguised as civil servants. All told today, there are now three dozen governors and mayors and city council members facing recall efforts, the vast majority of which, of course, obviously Democrats. So we'll most certainly be keeping our eyes on how things develop here, but there really is no question. More Democrats than ever are being targeted for removal from office which means more freedom and more prosperity for the rest of us. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. Definitely go to our merch site and get your Sleepy Joe t-shirt. And you definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on how Black Lives Matter murals continue to get defaced and destroyed across the nation as BLM support implodes. You're not going to want to miss that. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.